Oh, let me share my screen uh, in a few moments. I worked on Argo and um, how we can use Argo to deploy the um, TOS application components. Um, everybody should be able to see my screen right now, right? And um, this is what we have created. So with the help of the AI Ops SRE team, uh, we deployed an Argo CD server uh, on our infrastructure. Um, we have access to the Quick Lab cluster that uh, we are using for quite some time now for the testing environment. We will be able to access all the other clusters of the um, PSI infrastructure um, later on. Uh, this just needs to be um, enabled. And uh, what I did is that A, I restructured a little bit the, um, uh, the uh, customized applications themselves. So um, before I restructured them, I was following a strategy where I had a branch for the uh, test environment and I thought there will be a branch for the uh, staging environment and for the production environment. And it turns out to be really um, complicated. If you scroll back a little bit, uh, I think I'll, uh, like the last or the, the sprint demo before, I talked about my difficulties to deploy different components into different namespaces and how to separate uh, all our components. So having branches in these applications was not the best idea. I tried to revert that. Uh, but what you will see in the GitHub um, repository called TOS application is that, uh, I enlarged that, that for every component, we have one of these uh, directories. And within that directory, I have created a base um, directory and an overlays directory. Overlays is the way how the customization for the test environment in this case uh, happens. So the base directory contains uh, image streams and in this case for the surface level objective reporter, the cron job and the customization file. Uh, the image, image stream itself is um, pretty agnostic to the environment. It just says I'm, I'm an image stream for the SRO reporter. Um, look, up, look up policy is local. That's it. So when we are doing the deployment, we are Argo CD. Let me have a short look if I can find it here easily. If we have a look at the SLO reporter, um, Argo is going to use uh, the master branch. As I said, I'm going to get rid of the branches and it's going to use the test overlay uh, directory. Within that test overlay directory, we have another customization file. And coming back to the image stream, it says in the test environment, the image stream should be patched and it should contain this tag. So the latest um, tag of OpenShift will be pulled from the 064 dev tag up on Quay. This is how we can tell the uh, test environment you're going to use this specific image stream. And um, these bytes are the ones that will later on be patched by the Tekton pipeline if we deploy a new tag to the test environment. Right? Um, how should you go into that later on, I guess? Um, so the test overlay directory specifies what needs to be changed to uh, be customized for the test environment. Um, again, here's a customized file. Uh, I'm going to change the image stream. I have a little bit of config map over here. And uh, within these, I have this TOS notification um, resources, and they basically send out a short message via curl to our DevOps uh, channel. That is why you see these messages like I have successfully deployed blah, 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 component um, via Argo. So this is what um, I did, uh, main change, uh, no more branches for environments, but um, overlay directories in the master branch for each environment. And uh, we can now use uh, the Argo CD server provided by the app, uh, sorry, by the AI Ops SRE team um, everybody of us who is in the AI COE TOS DevOps group should be able to access that thing using your Kerberos credentials. 
um, if you want to release a new piece of software to the uh, test environment, you can simply use the chatbot, release a new tag, and the Tecton pipeline will modify the Argo, um, uh, sorry, the, the customized application, the, the um, Toth application repository, and Argo CD will push these changes into the test environment. That's the plan. Um, that's it. Um, any any questions, any comments, any uh, things I should detail a little bit on? So how do you, uh, can you show us how do you add secrets? Um, yes, I can. I cannot um, because uh, Blue Jeans is not able to share my um, my terminal window for whatever reason, but we share secrets. Um, so uh, Customize is responsible for creating secrets in the uh, environments. And um, what we have, where do we have a secret? Anybody knows? Uh, there would be one, I think, in you. Yeah, maybe. Yes, here. <laughs> Cool. So here's another secret. So uh, Customize is responsible for creating the secrets um, uh, OpenShift object or Kubernetes object, and Customize is going to use these encrypted secrets file to uh, create them. So we really store all our secrets in an encrypted way in the GitHub repository. This is, for example, the fancy secret that um, is required um, as a Kafka CA certificate. And uh, in the end, there is a block of GPG keys that are, um, are able to decrypt uh, this, these uh, secrets. Customize has a plugin that is called KSOPS. Get it, it's maybe here. And um, this Customize plugin uses the SOPS tool. Maybe I don't have it here, um, but doesn't matter. And that um, SOPS tool is responsible for doing all the encryption and decryption. Oh, here it is. Um, so the way how we do it is that we use a command line tool um, to create this encrypted um, uh, secrets file. It's basically saying uh, SOPS uh, encrypt and write whatever you got into this JAML file. If you have a look at the root directory, there should be the SOPS uh, configuration file. And that basically states uh, these three GPG keys should be able to decrypt uh, the secrets we have encrypted before. Um, the last one is the one of the Argo CD server. I think this is uh, Hashard and this is myself. So we are able to decrypt the secrets. Um, the last one, as I said, is the Argo CD server so that we enable um, customize to read and uh, decrypt this file and um, create an OpenShift secrets file on the OpenShift namespace. So if we have a look at the core repository, does anybody see the core repository? Yeah. Um, if you have a look at the secrets over here, I think the Kafka secret, you see this uh, desired manifest. That is what uh, Customize has calculated. Um, if you have a close look, it is a kind secret. Um, and the input to this was uh, actually, this file, which has kind list. No, it's not a list. Ah, it's encrypted. This is also a secret file, a list of secrets, but uh, these are encrypted secret files. So uh, the, the, the customized plugin KSOPS uh, was decrypting all this stuff and creating this secrets file and uh, Argo CD was responsible for deploying it or applying it uh, to the OpenShift namespace. Ah, that answered the question somehow? 
Yeah. This is yeah. <laughs> this is uh, the case ops um, plugin so that we can encrypt and decrypt uh, secrets using GPG with uh, customize and um, as that customize is used by Argo CD, Argo CD is able to decrypt whatever I've put in here into the encrypted secrets file and uh, deploy to OpenShift and I'm going to create the encrypted uh, secret file using a command line tool called Zops uh, by the Mozilla Foundation and that uses the same set of GPG keys to encrypt all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thanks. A tricky question, uh, especially if you have no terminal. Any other question? Cool. Thanks. Stop recording.